Hi guys and uh, welcome to another video. So um, it's been a while and uh, first things I like to say is thank you everybody for subscribing and liking my videos. Um, it's uh, it what keeps me going and making sure that I keep posting more content uh, as often as I can. Uh, thank you for all those people who are generously donating. That makes a, a difference so I can carry on testing more and more new products etc. And um, all I can say is uh, leave comments, etc., and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can and respond to them as well by answering all your questions. Also, uh, there has been some requests for videos, and what I'll do is as soon as I get some equipment in, I will be able to get some of those things tested for you um, as soon as I possibly can. Um, another reason for been about two months since I last posted the unboxing video of the Home Center 3 and the setup video of Home Center 3 is I've actually migrated my own Home Center um, into the 3 now. So um, reasons for that is really to make sure that um, we can get to grips with everything and show you guys how it works and of course um, to learn the Lua coding as they have made it a little bit different but what they've also done is they've actually improved what we call now quick apps. They used to be called virtual devices, but they're now called quick apps. And they are, in my opinion, a lot better than what the VDs were. And you've got more options with them. And they're much, it, they're just like miniature apps. Everything can be included within the app itself. So there's no more third party creating icons and, sorry, not icons, um, creating variables and things like that, as everything can be uh, built into it. Anyway. So more of that in a short while, but before that, let's have a look at the uh, let's have a look at the home center. Here is mine, home center three. So as I was showing you earlier, so we've got the different rooms. So I've created all the rooms here on my left, and so it's quick access to each room, and of course there's quick access to the device types at the top, as I was showing you earlier on. Quick uh, shortcuts to tell me what's going on, so who's logged in, uh, what updates are required, and any messages that I may have, and of course who's logged in, etc. So this is me and my property. And uh, so I, I th the good thing about this is it's nice and responsive to the website. So all you do if you just scan like that, it just moves things across nicely. So which is brilliant no more restricted by four icons like we had last time even no matter how big the screen is so uh, that's a massive improvement things can be seen also quick actions so if i were to click on a device say for example that it will then give me the options here this happens to be a, a hue plugin and uh, for the whole room zone um, i'll come on to a separate video on that because that's to do with the scaro automation bridge that allows us to pull in room data as well as individual bulb data compared to the native plugin, but that's a different video. So if I go onto the uh, the actual bulb itself, so you've got the option here as well for individual lamps and rooms instead. At the moment, if you've only got one room, uh, sorry, one lamp in per room, then these two both act exactly the same. But anyway, separate video. Back to this one. So all the devices are here, and as you can see, they're all named all little icons you can move them around like this no problem at all whatsoever in order to uh, make changes to them <coughs> you can just uh, uh, click on those little uh, little arrows it then displays a device and then you can activate the device um, if it has any sub entries or if you just click on the icon itself it just turns the item on turns the item off simple as that if they happen to be something like a dimmer module then you can actually got uh, controls here as well to allow you to dim and brighten etc okay uh, what else was I going to show you uh, scene creation is slightly different slightly different so let's go into scenes so first of all hidden Quick click on there allows you to see all your hidden scenes. Click on that, and that's it. All the other scenes are hidden again. Quick categories, so you can, if you put your scenes into certain categories, you can then it brings out all the different um, scenes that you've uh, what's the word 
that you created a category for. So uh, uh, this will mean here, category remotes, and that's where I put the scene name and and therefore I can bring it up very, very quickly. So if I click on say multimedia and then show hidden, and those are all my multimedia scenes. Uh, again, that will be, this is all to do with this, this, these scenes I'll go through on a different video. So that's how quickly we can um, go through scenes. So it's easy to maintain compared to um, the Home Center 2 where you always had to go into the scene and then hit uh, hidden, show hidden. At least here you can click it anywhere you like and it will go backwards and forwards between them all. Um, in terms of scene creation, then uh, we have ability to copy the scene, uh, ability to edit the scene. If you do create a scene in block, you can quickly convert it to Lua and see what's going on. And But the only difference is also they've got the scene creation is all to do with the um, um, JSON lower, JSON coding, etc. So that's how it's different. So it may be a little bit harder to uh, to work as well. So where do we go from here? Now, quick apps is the other thing I was going to show you. It now back on devices. It all appears on devices, but they're not Z-Wave devices. They're not nice devices. They're actually other devices. So we click on others. So that comes up with all your cameras and things like that. So they work just as before, um, just like with the Home Center 2. And again, you can incorporate them into scene. Um, so you can get pictures from uh, any form of activation that you want to do. And um, this is the one I want to show you, thermostatic control. So the other advantage of um, quick apps is as well as doing the normal uh, functions we've also oh Sonos as well but Sonos again it goes through my automation bridge so here we've got a bit of color where we can actually create um, titling we can pull the data so these are the current set points for the for the downstairs thermostat I can amend the timings sorry the temperature as I please but just by altering this um, uh, using these buttons here it will also tell me my current temperature and uh, what the current temperature is, but I haven't run this in a loop on purpose as um, to help prevent memory. So we just keep clicking, you just click that to let you know what it is, current temperature is in the house, and therefore we can then set the set point appropriately. So as you saw, it was set to 22, and it was maintaining the house temperature at 22. The temperature I actually use is um, an average temperature of my ground floor. So all my ground floor rooms have got temperature sensors, add them all together, divide by the number of rooms to give me my average temp, and then I use that measurement to, to uh, regulate the heating downstairs. That way I don't get, I don't find that if say the hallway is cold but the rooms are warm, then it just warms up everything even more. No, it, it actually then gets a good average and uh, heat, the heat spreads and etc. So I find that a bit more efficient. Uh, same with the upstairs heating. So, but the important here is is that you can actually then now get color. So you can change the colors, the fonts, and make it all interactive as well. See, the other um, thing we can do if you don't want to go that is hopefully soon I'll be working on uh, the matrix as well. So we'll make that a little bit more colorful by adding in custom icons to the different boxes, uh, custom rooms. So instead of the word cinema, maybe have an icon in there instead. So that's the advantages we have with what's called quick apps. So this video was um, short and so compared to all my others. And here you can just wanted to show um, the system up and running and showing all the code, well, showing all the scenes that can be achieved. Um, from the Home Center 2, Home Center 3 with a little bit more extra. Um, any questions, as usual, just send us a message and hopefully uh, next week or so I'll have the uh, project video that I've done um, on Home Center 3 based as well um, offer you as a new video. So all I can say now is thank you for watching. Um, please subscribe, like, etc. Um, to make any donations and uh, I'll see you shortly in the next video. Bye for now.